Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sandy, and I, I want to thank you for coming. This is our um, next episode of uh, Nurse Talk, and I appreciate you guys hanging on. I understand it's been, you know, it's just been a little bit of a wait, and um, we were just having some technical difficulties. So I want to welcome our special guest, Dr. Wickman. Wickman. Which sorry, yes. And um, she is actually a good friend of mine. So I always call her Dr. Lori. So I don't really talk about her last name. So we, we have been talking a little bit back and forth about incivility and healthcare and about how it is really a problem. And she is a little background is that she has her master's in nursing education and her DMP in nursing leadership and management. Uh, she's a nationally certified medical surgical nurse and you know, a nursing profession, you know, does a lot with nursing uh, profession development and has been serving as nursing faculty within three schools of nursing pre-licensure and post-licensure programs where she's taught nurses as foundations of nursing, gerontology, community health, medical surgical uh, courses, and uh, nursing leadership and management professional roles, and also organizational behavior, which ties into a lot of what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, Dr. Wickman is a retired Air Force mm -hmm. and um, an Air Force nurse and where she was deployed in Iraq where she was a PACU nurse. Dr. Wickman has also extensively, uh, has worked extensively on process improvement projects to improve the safety and quality of patient care as she's given a number of presentations which include infection prevention, improving the practice of bedside nursing and interactive teaching strategies. Uh, Dr. Wickman is also currently a manager and nursing professional specialist at her facility and a contributing faculty, faculty at, the online, at an online university. Dr. Wickman is also currently conducting a research project on incivility and burnout during the COVID-19 pandemic and also incivility and its effects on graduate nurses. So I want to welcome you. Thank With you. Arms, we, you know, I absolutely love you. I think you're the most sweetest person <laughs> I've ever met. Uh, very supportive of what we do here at Nurses Against Violence. And, you know, we've talked on several different occasions about how it is an absolute problem with what we have going on. Mm -hmm. um, I would like you to share a little bit about the study and some of the data that you've come across so mm -hmm. far um, over your quest of finding information. And I'm sure you'll get lots of people responding to this, which I'm hoping. And if I find some questions, I will ask you while you are speaking. So please, by all means, tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your study. Well, it started out um, when I was teaching years ago in an undergraduate program. And actually, it was back probably in about 2015, about the time that the ANA came out with their position statement on incivility and bullying uh, and workplace aggression. So I had some students who were in the leadership class that were doing a process improvement project and they were doing it on incivility in nursing school. And it sparked my interest there when I saw their presentation and I realized how deeply it was affecting them and uh, broke my heart. Uh, then I uh, continued on in my career doing bedside reporting, realizing nurses were afraid to go to the bedside and talk to each other about patients. And then I, um, an opportunity came to me uh, where some researchers uh, uh, approached me on wanting to join and do a research project. And theirs was really looking at burnout during COVID. And I said, well, you know, I'm hearing stories uh, in school and other places about incivility and, and during COVID. And so I asked, so we decided to join and we're kind of basically looking to see if there's um, a link between the burnout the nurses are experiencing and incivility during the time of COVID. Uh, then I decided, why not go back and get your PhD? You already got your one doctorate, you might as well get two. And I uh, really decided that, you know, I need to look at this further. 
So during school, just looking at incivility, incivility is not special to nursing. Mm-hmm. Incivility in workplace uh, bullying, workplace aggression is um, happens can happen in any workplace setting. But we're caring. We're the caring profession, that trusted profession, and we have this great passion for our patients. And so, mm-hmm. you know, you the whole story. Nurses eat their young. Oh yeah, it's you know like, we, what thirty. Then, as long as I can remember, yeah, as long as I can remember, we you you hear that that story. But why aren't we growing our young? Why why is this still a thing? A and A said, you know, you need to stop it. Why is it still a thing? And I think a couple reasons that it's still a thing is sometimes it's very vague. Sometimes we don't Mm -hmm. have defined definitions of what incivility is. Mm -hmm. One incident does not incivility make. We all have bad days. Exactly. And we have to track and document incivility if we're going to report it in a way, because if you're, if if you say, oh, well, she was mean to me today. Well, was she just having a bad day? Right. So it's, it's, it's this kind of vagueness, but it does affect the nurses. In fact, some studies show that um, incivility, um, nurses experience incivility, they said about uh, some studies, up to 80% of nurses experience incivility either on a daily or weekly basis. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Or even multiple times a day. <laughs> <laughs> but they're experienced, they're experiencing or even witnessing it. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. And, and they're, do, they're seeing it and they're witnessing it. And um, so there's this, um, from what I found so far in my study is that I realized nurses are still caring about their patients. They still, they have not lost that even during COVID. They still have this deep passion for caring for their patients. They are tired. That There's no doubt about that. We've all seen that during COVID. So I decided to look at um, in, uh, well, in my program, my PhD program, incivility and the effects on the retention of the new graduate nurse. Why is that important? Well, we always hear nurses are leaving the profession within that first year if they're going to leave. And, but what is making them leave? Yep. What is making them leave? So I started looking at incivility as a whole, and I wanted to see what that relationship it was between incivility, stress, burnout, and their retention. Is that all affecting them? And so during my, my search and my, my research, I found, you know, we have a perpetrator and a target. So we have the nurse that is causing the incivil, that's being uncivil or bullying even, and you have the nurse, the potentially the new graduate nurse, the younger nurse, that's the recipient of this. Generally, what they research is showing is that there's a, a, a power difference or a either the more experienced nurse that's causing the incivility, it's a charge nurse, nurse manager, preceptor that that's being uncivil to that new grad nurse. Why? Because we eat our young. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it's just how it's always been. That's kind of some of the research out there is showing nurses feel like, well, this is how this is what this happened to me. This is a rite of passage, right? Mm-hmm. So then that that perpetrator either commits verbal attacks or even nonverbal attacks. You know, oh, I can't help you now. Rolling their eyes, huffing, just just annoyed um, expressions. That affects the new graduate nurse who may or may not have coping mechanisms. They're still new. They don't feel, may not feel yet connected to their unit, not have connection with their peers yet. They they don't know how to handle it, or there are those that do. They 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 do very well at handling it. That can cause then. Um, psychological stress. Depending on their level of coping, it can, you, they may have an increased level of stress, which then can cause physical stress. You know, that's physio- uh, physiological stress, sick to your stomach, headache, somatic complaints. Yep. Yes, yes. And does that lead to burnout? Does that add to that burnout feeling? <laughs> and, you know, and then do they ultimately leave the organization, unit, whatever, or profession? Now, the nurse that does handle this well and doesn't leave may then see, well, is this the culture? Oh, this is accepted behavior. Drink the Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. 
And they may then in the future become the perpetrator. There's this perpetrator target or victim cycle. Yep. And it is such a cycle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really sad that we see this in these nurses and that these nurses are having to, to, to experience. I was just talking to a nurse the other day that said, why haven't we gotten better at this? We were those nurses, those baby nurses one day that said, that hated how we were being treated. We hated that, and then, that incivility. Yep. But then we end up turning and doing that same cycle mm-hmm. again. And I'll say, have there been days when I've had, a, I've had a bad day? In fact, I called you one day and said, I have had a horrible day and I was mean to one of my nurses. And you said, Lori, everybody is able to have a bad day. Yes, we're able to have bad days, okay? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, but it's how you respond to it. Yes. And how you then, I, and I called that nurse and said, you know, I am so sorry. You did nothing to deserve that. I was having a bad day and I apologize. That is the difference. That is the difference. That is it's, what we're missing. And, so, exactly. and then that nurse that is the victim, right? is, oh my God, Dr. Dr. Weekman doesn't like me. Da, 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 da. Like filling her own head with mm-hmm. whatever her assumptions are. And all you had to do was just say, hey, listen, I had a bad day. And that would have totally cleared the air. Mm-hmm. Are little nuggets, guys, of how we can stop incivility. incivility. And a lot, of, a lot of it comes from leadership. Mm-hmm. A lot of it comes from leadership. And it's is it okay? No, they have bad days too, right? Everybody has a bad day, but let's not make it days, mm-hmm. right? It's tough out there. We got to be strong. Exactly. And I, you know, what, what was really tough is, you know, in school, you know, I'm in school getting my PhD and a lot of these nurses I'm in the school with, they're, they're getting their PhD, you know, their first doctorate. And so, you know, I'm coming in halfway through with my DMP to PhD program and they are emailing me, telling me stories. Mm-hmm. And my heart broke hearing some of these stories. Truly hearing these stories, my heart just sank because, wow. And some of these nurses said, I left my job. I left my job. You know, I think part of what I will hope to do with my study is see how this is affecting nurses, see where this is, um, this behavior is, is at, you know, what, who is perpetrating? Is it, is it peer to peer more often than not? Is it, um, a superior to the nurse? Mm -hmm. So we can provide that education, not just, oh, how do you deal with conflict resolution, but how do you deal with this vague incivility and uncivil behavior? address it and change the culture on your unit. So I, we do have a comment from Scott. He said, at least in our small hospital, the mean slash bully ones are mostly med surge nurses, but wherever they work, I still do not understand it. I also hear that this is a normal behavior on med surge. Okay. So, and thank you very much, Scott, for your comment. So when we, we have this, the, the Kool-Aid drinkers, right, that are continuing and doing the, the circle of violence, they're not understanding RBF is a problem, which is resting B, B face. They're not understanding that, you know, these are the same nurses that could be the ones that say, oh, another addict. Oh, another person that's on the floor. Oh, Mr. Smith is back. You better watch that left hook. You know, listen, I've been in all that dark humor and all that sarcasm, and I I could I could pass the tongue with the rest of everybody. Mm-hmm. Like I have it, but I like to hold off because you know what? I understand being homeless. I understand what a lot of these people were. I could have gone down the path of these other folks. I decided no, 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 I'm not gonna turn out. After my mom abandoned me at 16, I'm not going to turn out to be like everybody else. I'm going my own direction, dropping out of school in ninth grade. I understand working three jobs at 16 years old. I get it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So when I have a patient that is struggling and is turning to drugs and alcohol, that is their coping mechanism. And quite frankly, it's a problem in nursing. Mm -hmm. It's a problem in medical. It's a problem in, with lawyers. It's a problem because all of the stressors pile up and there's no way, to, there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to have a conversation with. No wingman is what I usually call it, right? Or wing woman to say, hey, listen, what do you think? Hey, this is a problem. I'm having, I'm struggling. Well, and, and I don't mean to, you know, interject this, but guys, you can always reach out to me if you need somebody objective to talk to, you know, like I'm just one person, but I'm, I'm here for our group. If you're having a problem, I can't solve it for you, but I'll help you think of ideas. I'm not a lawyer. I will help you do the best I can to find answers on your own. And then you could take it from there. And it's important as a nurse manager, you are the leader of your group. If you go down that vicious cycle, which all of it's violence from denying like you know, continuously denying you PTO, you know, not allowing you to have time off after you got an injury. A lot of that has to do with a form of violence. If you sit back and you look at it, you'd be like, wow, that nurse is against violence lady. She's always talking about people that are punching nurses. No, it's not just that. It's incivility. It's just the, the things that you're just like, wow, that was just wrong. You know, and what Scott says, you know, and I just want to point, he talks about med surge nurses. I am not going to pin this just on med surge nurses. Oh, um, I'm, I've, I've, my history is med surge. My, that's kind of my background. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen, you know, nurses who come for a rapid response. Oh, why did you call? Mm -hmm. Well, that nurse needed you at that time. And they, they are young and they're new and they're fresh and they're stressed. And you by saying, why did you call this? It need to be called is not helping. And I, and I, and I not just, not just it's, but I think it's everywhere. And I don't think it's special to med search. No. Um, a lot of our new nurses do go into med search. Mm -hmm. They do. That's they go, that's, that's, that's the, that's the foundation. That's the place they start. Med, med surge is a very hard floor. And then when you throw in tele or ortho on top of that, it's, it becomes you're prepping people for surgery. You're, you're, you know, you're monitoring people. People might be going for a cath in the morning or going for a stress test. I mean, there's so many different things going on in a med surge floor. And then you have your frequent flyers, which, you know, throw that in the mix and they need their, you know, they need pain medicine. We're not there to cure them right? Yeah. They're there yeah. for their habit. They're there because they got a needle stuck in their arm and it's our job to make sure we prep, prep them for surgery, make sure his vital signs are stable, not to judge him. He's already being judged. That's why he's doing what he's doing. So, you know, we have, um, you know, you, you raise some great points about that because, you know, it's not just that the people are, they come in from the ER, they come in, they're, they're swinging, Police mm -hmm. drops him off and a famous sheriff that I talked to, he couldn't believe it. He's like, oh my God. He's like, we were told that the nurses were trained. The trained to take down these violent people. I'm like, no, sir. What they have is a program that is complicated, refreshed every year. And then if they catch you on camera doing the wrong technique and you might be on their bad spot you might be losing your nursing license that's the reality because they got you on camera and they'll say it's assault and it's happened a lot i know there's people out there that'll say that that it happened to them so it's important that you know we also understand that when the ed gives them the medications to calm down where do they go med surge. Do you think med surge is prepared to take care of that? Now they're, they're beasts. They're, they're absolute amazing folks on med surge. Okay. They work very hard, but that weighs on your person after a while. 
right? Mm -hmm. When you have like five to seven patients, the ED has like maybe three, maybe two, three, somewhere around there. I mean, somebody might chime in and tell me how many that they have, yeah. but that's, you know, they drug them, you know, they get them calmed down. These people are asleep and they wake up and they're right back at it again. So, mm -hmm. so this incivility everywhere. And I agree. And you know what I found from my, pe from my peers that uh, in my program that emailed me and said, Hey, Lori, I have a story to share with you. So you have a story to share later on. The common theme when they told me these stories was they were afraid to report. Mm -hmm. They were afraid to report for retaliation. And these are, these are people that are got their masters, they're going for their doctorates and they're afraid to report, yeah. you know, and, you know, because did they keep proper track of each moment that this occurred and will they believe me? And, 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 one of the nurses that in my class emailed me a letter that she was preparing because of what I had said to her and because of what I had put in my paper that we shared in our group discussions that she was sending to her former employer that she just left and decided to go travel nurse because she couldn't do it anymore where she mm -hmm. was. And, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to report. We shouldn't you know, and we're not tattling on each other because somebody had one bad day. Right. This is something that's a pattern mm -hmm. and they need to report um, because management can't help you or help change things. Or if they don't see the numbers, they don't, if it's one person, well, it's one person, but if they have multiple reports, they're like, okay, not one person does a trend make, you know? No. And it has to be like, you know, I was, I was doing like when I did my project, right. I had like a little box and people would put in anonymous tickets. Now you guys might want to do this, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of putting this out there. So like any of the CNAs, anybody like that, or, you know, anybody that's working on the front end can put these little pieces of paper. If you don't, if you got punched or whatever, they didn't really hit you and you don't want to report, report it that you could put this little slip in there and say, you know, this violent attack happened, whatever. They don't know who did it. And then, you know, unless they go and watch the cameras, but it should be a way that there's an anonymous reporting system. So people don't feel like they're being watched and retaliated just so they can start capturing data of these violent episodes and, you know, and then keep a tally. I did this for in the first week I had one that was, huge right the next week i had nine mm -hmm. and then it continued on now i don't know exactly why maybe it leveled off but at that point i was kind of excused for my vmp project because i was on the in nurse abuse panel and I was, you know, you know, Jayco just came out with the, the patient on nurse violence or the patient violence uh, sentinel event. So I think that they were a little concerned about what I was doing and it was only meant to try to make things better. Mm -hmm. So there's a big scare out there amongst nurses and frontline healthcare, like our CNAs and stuff like that. If they do something wrong, that they are going, they're going to turn it around onto them that they're going to lose their job and their livelihood. Mostly, mostly we have a female ran nursing, right? It's mostly female ran single parents. And yes, you can get a job anywhere, but why do you have to go someplace else? Mm -hmm. Why can't we make the one that we have right now better? Mm -hmm. So it is important that we have that ownership in order to make things grow and to have the retention. It just needs to be talked about, mm -hmm. right? So that also, when we talked last week, um, I don't, I'm not sure if you um, heard what I was talking about, about the CNO. We did, we were talking about this, the CNO stepping down, not as like quitting, but coming to the floor and seeing what's going on. You know, that would be amazing. That would be like, hey, guys, you know, I got my white coat on, whatever. Here I am. Who needs a bedpan? I'll answer that light for you. 
this, that, do you need anything else? Would your morale on that floor would be like so much better. They're not asking you to do nothing. They're afraid of you, but you offering and you going out of your way really makes a huge difference. If you want to stop, you know, people leaving, you got to start relating to them. You need to start building relationships. Yeah, I said it, relationships. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, right, you're just another stranger. And then another stranger can just hit anybody, another mm -hmm. stranger, can do whatever that they want. So. Yeah, and you know, with my study that I'm doing, it's gonna be a multi-hospital study. So um, in fact, I'm even talking about potentially doing something with the Florida Board of Nursing maybe, uh, seeing if they would uh, do the survey out there. So. You know, I just think that we need to do better with our um, our new graduate nurses and and give them the support and 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 grow them and help them and um, be encouragers. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. She's always wanting attention. <laughs> always wanting attention. This one. <laughs> oh. she, wants, she wants the limelight Stella so um yeah no it's very important and I think there was a statistic that you were going to share with us tonight about like anything that you found with your project so far um we're still actually doing in the middle of our data or we're just finished our data collection and so it's all the data is currently being uh reviewed so I don't have um, the exact numbers at this time. Uh, so I, I was, was hoping to share it, but I, I don't actually have anything to share yet because it's still, you know, the, the statistician is still putting it all together. So, um, but, but the trend is that, you know, what, what we're so happy to see is our nurses still have compassion. They still care. Mm -hmm. They still want to do the right thing for their patient. And, um, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're tired and they're burnt out, not burnt out. They just need a break and a breather and a um, time to recoup and refresh. Exactly. I think that there should also, um, I was, uh, you know, just as a side note, I think we need to start writing letters to like us in Florida and you guys in whatever state that you're in, um, like the governor's start like send them an email every other day, the same email until they start listening to us. It's not going to hurt, right? What is it going to hurt? They're going to hear about, you know, nursing violence. Um, they're going to hear about things that they don't want to deal with, but wouldn't it be great if we could have laws passed in every, con every state and every country around the world that for that, for everyone watching in a different country. So, with that being said, I mean, is there any like lasting thoughts that you would like to leave everybody because you know we have such a an awesome group out there watching. Just remember to be kind and give grace to those new graduate nurses. They came through a time when um, some of them didn't get very many clinicals at all. It was no. in a simulation lab, and just remember that uh, they're coming to you for help because they they need your help. And just to be, just to um, give, be that support. I concur. I think that's the most important thing. And, and, and when you're having a bad day, don't be afraid to say, I'm sorry, I'm having a bad day. That's a beautiful point. I love that. So, and we're not perfect. No. We're perfect people. So um, I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. We're going to have Dr. Wickman back um, because it's very important that, you know, I want to hear more about her data when she's getting a little bit further into this project and, and maybe there might be some other things that she would like to talk about, um, you know, just to help us along because you know as that nurse educator in us. So but thank you so much for taking the time out to come on here and thank um, you. being such a support to nurses against violence I, I do appreciate it personally and professionally. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. All right. Bye guys. Bye-bye.